Hello, I'm here today with Joe Curtis, Fund Manager of the City of London Investment Trust. Hello, Joe. Hello. Brexit. Um, we have to talk about it. It's finally happened. Um, so we've had the, bo uh, the Boris bounce, uh, but the coronavirus has sort of put a spanner in the works, uh, at least short term. Uh, I mean, do you see current market volatility as an opportunity to pick up cheap stock? Have you tweaked the portfolio at all over the past uh, couple of weeks? I've, I believe in shares for the long term. And at the moment, the dividends available in UK equities, you know, are very attractive relative to bank deposit rates or British government bonds and fixed interest generally. So, um, you know, one's always looking for opportunities. Um, and, you know, I invest for the long term. So, so some, sometimes when you get turbulence, that, that can be a good, good opportunity to, to add to positions or even buy new positions. And we've got 11 months of, of trade negotiations uh, to come. A potential cliff edge if a deal isn't agreed by the end of 2020. And we're told that if, if a deal isn't agreed by then, then that's it. It's a hard stop. Um, do you think an agreement is possible in such a short time frame? Is your uh, opinion affecting the trust investment strategy? Well, I don't think anyone really knows exactly what's going to happen, to be honest. But one, one would hope that from both point of the UK and the EU, some sort of deal is worth doing. It's in the interests of, of both parties. But, um, you know, I really stick to the stocks and, you know, the core of the portfolio is big global companies, which I think are you know, well positioned, you know, whatever the outcome. And, you know, we've also got some very attractive domestic stocks within the portfolio. So I think it's, you know, it's difficult to second guess the macro, but I, I feel that shares are a good place to be overall through this process. Now, what stocks have you been buying and, and selling lately, if any? Um, whether, I guess, whether we think that Brexit will, um, or, or a, a trade negotiations will, will end in a in a deal by the end of 2020 or not, that the, the markets have come off a little bit. Yeah, the stocks are cheaper than they were. That there's that. Have you been sort of um, dipping your toe in recently? Yes, in, in over the last sort of three or four months, have been three new holdings, um, and two of them are domestic. Where I felt I sensed with the election, everything there might might be an opportunity to up our weighting a little bit in the domestic area, and I bought back into Royal Bank of Scotland, which I think is uh, attractively positioned now. Strong capital ratios, good dividend. Profile and also Morrison's the supermarket. I, I bought a new holding in, in that one. And the third holding is slightly different. It's the French national lottery um, uh, owner or franchise. They've got a 25 year franchise and it um, was recently privatized. And I, I bought into that situation. It's called FDJ, it's, if it's a mnemonic. And then on sales, I sold out a TUI, the tour operator, which has been quite badly hit by the um, delays and the Boeing Max coming into um, use. and. Um, also, its debt's risen a bit, so uh, they've had to cut their dividend. And a couple of smaller holdings which hadn't gone so well, De La Rue, the banknote printer, and Connect Group, the distributor, and I sold out of both of those. But sometimes it's best to sort of take a view and cut your losses and move on when something hasn't gone well. You, you mentioned some sort of, uh, I guess, foreign investment, overseas investment. Uh, the, the, the trust is primarily um, UK. Uh, in, in what circumstances would you look overseas? Is it for diversification or is it specific to the special situations? Yes, we, we, um, we'll always be at least 80% UK listed stocks. So some of our UK listed stocks like, you know, Royal Dutch Shell or Glaxo are really multinational companies, uh, but you're listed in, in the UK. At the moment, we're about 10% overseas. And in some sectors, it gives you some extra diversification in pharmaceuticals. We've got Merck of the US, which has done very well. And sometimes it's to really benefit from an area which you can't really get the same exposure in the UK market. I mean, a good example which has worked very well for us over the years has been Microsoft, which we bought into when it was very out of favour. We haven't got a huge holding, but it has done exceptionally well, and you, you obviously can't find the equivalent in the UK market. Absolutely. Well, you mentioned Microsoft. I'll ask the question now. Are you, you're hanging on, are you? Because, again, the question is, US tech stocks, they do give UK investors valuable diversification. You can't really buy you know, mega cap sort of tech in the UK. Yeah. So is, is Microsoft just one that you, you don't even look at anymore? You just, it's a, it's well, a hold forever? I, yeah, I bought it on a, when it was on a 3% yield. I, I took some profits wrongly when they bought LinkedIn and at that point it already doubled and, that, and it's now doubled again. And I'm sort of watching it. It's, it does offer something very different to portfolio. It is dividend paying, unlike some of the big tech stocks in America, which don't pay dividends. Um, so. Um, if it was a big holding in the portfolio, um, I, would, I would probably be reducing it at the moment. But it, uh, at the moment, it's, um, 
I'm holding it. Moving on to another sort of uh, mega cap. I mean, they, they say never sell Shell. Um, but if you could only own one income stock, which one would it be? Well, Sh Shell hasn't cut its dividend since the Second World War, but actually its dividend has been quite flat in, in recent years. And obviously people are very concerned about climate change and what the impact that might have on, on the old companies. So, I mean, I, to be honest, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't sort of single out any one share. I think, you know, if you're looking for exposure to the stock market, um, I would go the collective route, you know, through an investment trust, which I believe in, or, or an open-ended um, uh, fund, you know, and I think that would, you know, if, rather than take any, any share, however blue chip it is or big, you know, there's stock specific risks. I mean, BP in 2010 and oil rig blew up in the Gulf of Mexico and it almost bankrupted the country, company and it was, you know, one of the biggest um, shares on the London stock market. So I, I think it's um, a mistake to imagine any one company is, um, uh, you know, is, is blue chip. Um, I think that, you know, there's a huge amount of disruption going on in the economy and, and I think you do, it's best to have a spread of investments is what I would argue. You mentioned both the companies, uh, Shell and, and BP. I mean, you hold a, a reasonable stake in both Shell more than um, BP. Uh, could you explain your thinking and, um, and also w while we're talking about sectors, financials too, so sort of yeah. the, the, you know, both oils and financials? Well, oils, we, we, we have a large holding in Shell and BP, both of them, but we are actually underrepresented relative to the market average. So they are very big stocks in the UK index. I mean, I think they've been managed well in recent years and they've brought their costs down, uh, but they are very much subject to the fortunes of the oil price, which sort of moves around. They're also quite big in natural gas, particularly Shell, where, where in a way that could be more of a fuel for the future. And they certainly have got challenges adapting to you know, climate change and the requirements. But you know, having said that, you know, the oil at the moment, you know, petrochemicals are still vital, you know, and, and demand for oil globally is growing at a small amount, um, particularly in emerging markets. So I think it's too soon to write them off, but one has to be aware of the challenges they face. But I think all businesses, you know, in, in our, our era, you know, they do, you know, there is this massive change going on throughout the economy and, and society, and it affects the financials as well. I mean, we have a mixture. We've talked a bit about Lloyds Bank, and I mentioned I bought RBS recently, but we've also got um, HSBC and Banking and Barclays. And we've got some pretty good um, holdings in insurance, both life assurance with Prudential and um, non-life assurance with c companies like Hiscox, which is more of a medium-sized size company. So um, we, we, you know, we think um, you know, the financial services is something the UK does quite well, and there's some very good British companies in, in that area. I mean, some of them, like Prudential, are operating mainly in Asia-Pacific, or HSBC, and others are kind of more focused on the domestic economy. So, uh, there's, there's a good choice out there, and um, I'm very confident of the ones that we hold. Joe Curtis, thank you very much. Pleasure.